So let's talk about now, you know, we've built this RDL file. Let's talk a little bit more about what the RDL looks like. Uh, let's also take a look at how to edit and modify and kind of add to and change up the report itself. Now, let me just apologize for the length of that last video. It was a bit long, I know. I try not to go over about the 15-minute mark too often. Now, I usually try to stay around the 10-minute mark. But, you know, sometimes you get into working with something and it just, there's no natural break. And so, I'm sorry. A anyhow, um, I've got my report open here that we just created. I've gone ahead and closed all of the windows except for the design view so that we can just focus on this particular part of the report. Okay. So I, we talked about earlier in the last video that this was an RDL file. And it actually is an RDL file. If you'll remember earlier, we talked about how the reports are not stored necessarily in files in reporting services. They're stored in the database. Well, if you're working in the Visual Studio, there's this strange dichotomy, this weird relationship. So you will develop using files. Then when we later deploy these to the server, the files are no longer necessary and reporting services will not use the files. Um, i trying to think of an easy way. So like uh, this file is called report1.rdl and I can close out of here. And it's in my uh, documents folder under Visual Studio 2008 projects. So you can kind of see up here at the top uh, the path that it's putting it in by default. And that's the what we would call the solution folder. And more on what the solution is and the solution folders uh, thing in the next video. But so I can actually go in here. Go into the folder, and sure enough, there is my file. So it doesn't have it. I have my uh, extensions turned off, but that's a report project file. Let me turn my extensions on here. Oh, I just cannot stand it. Um, so I have to fake it out. Um, come over here. I have to remember how to do this. So. I don't want to hide the extensions, and oh, there it is. Sorry, I was looking in the at the wrong one there. Um, it's the report builder report file. Now, really, yours is going to be different. If you do not have report builder installed already, it's not going to actually say that. But if I double click with this now, notice that report builder 2.0 has launched. When I I've already installed it on this computer. We're going to do that at the end of the chapter. Okay, I'm going to kind of show you the basics of Visual Studio and reporting and then we'll come to the report builder but when I did install report builder it changed the file association so that RDL files if you double click on them open with the report builder okay so you can see here it, it looks the exact same but I'm gonna close that out because that's not what I was looking to do here but it is an RDL file and I want to show you kind of what it looks like behind the scenes so what I could do is I could open this just with a text editor. Uh, so I come down here like, um, don't want to do that. I'll use a notepad. And you know, it's, it's just an XML file, right? I mean, that's really what this is. Notice right here is our data source. And then here is the query that we pasted in and told it to run. Uh, let's see, down here we've got a table that's going to store our values. Uh, we're going to use the Verdana font, 11 points, bold for the header. Uh, here's our coloring of the information. There's a text box. And so, uh, you know, you could see it's a tablix behind the scenes. Okay. Even though we called it a table, remember that the tablix replaces the table in matrix, except, and, and it's behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, let's see what else might we see in here to just familiarize ourselves with this here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty much a fairly standard uh, kind of basic stuff, really. We're talking about the width of the body, the page margins down here, how we handle white space, what language are we using here, what's the height. You know, this 
some of this stuff is design time here. Some of this stuff is actually used for run time. So RDL, pretty specific. Yes, you could write it by hand, but you know, generally speaking, you wouldn't. But it's just XML. Okay. All right, so I got that. Let me go back in the Visual Studio. And I'm going to go to the recent projects because it will remember that project and I can just launch it from here. And it's loading it up. And so it just sort of brings my environment back. So this is my RDL file. What I'm going to do is look at the Solution Explorer. We're going to be doing that a lot over the next probably 10, 20 videos. The Solution Explorer over here has the report. So if I close it out here, I can see it over here. I can also see that there are no shared data sources. And we'll talk more about those a couple videos from now. Okay. But I can double click over here and now it loads up this particular report and I can start changing it up if I want to. I can make modifications, I can make a column wider, I can take the entire table and make it wider. I could say, you know, I want the the name column over here to be uh, a little bit wider. Okay. I can start making other changes like if I go to the toolbox the toolbox is going to have all of the different data regions so you can see the uh, different data regions uh, that we had listed here and I've kind of got them covered up there but I can add in things like a text box down at the bottom so I could say uh, well I could embed it in there let's expand our report. We're, we're dealing with the canvas here. So I've got my text box down here uh, from Scott Wiggum. You know, one of the things I like to put in a report, a common thing that people like to do is report author Scott Wiggum. Please direct questions and or comments to joe.blow at uh, acmecore.com right a lot of people like to know who the person is responsible particularly for your c-level reports your uh, executive level reports they want to be able to go to you straight say hey man i need to be able to add this one little bitty thing can we do it right. and then i just click the preview button over here right and so it's rendering my report what happens when it's doing that is it's running the query and then it's taking the query and compiling it into the report and putting it in here into our report right and so down at the very bottom sure enough our report information came in so editing it is a fairly easy job now let me show you one other thing here you notice the report.rdl has this little asterisk okay? we are in design mode right now so we're able to change the view of the report, the colors, the fonts, you know, whatever we really need to. Um, if you've changed something, but you have not saved it, it will show up as this asterisk. Asterisk. Okay. So watch, I'm going to just hit the save button. The asterisk goes away. I make another change down here, like I want to put a line in here. Okay, So I'm going to just draw a line. And notice how it tries to help me align that and sort of an IntelliSense for lines, if you will. And as soon as I've changed the report but I haven't saved it, now it's back to the asterisk. And as I hit save, we're cool. Now, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do. Um, a couple of things I could do. I can look at the RDL. Like I could go to the Solution Explorer. And I can right click on the report and view the code. This is the exact same thing we were looking at earlier. The difference is now we get the benefit of being able to see it inside the Visual Studio. And you can see that I can collapse certain elements. So like there's the body definition. Here's the report items. You can see that even though we specified this was a table, that behind the scenes it's really what is called a tablix. Again, we're going to talk more about that a little bit later. So it's really RDL, and if you make changes here, they will be propagated. However, it's not suggested.
Okay, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Hey, like I could change this from the Verdana font to um, Arial, okay? And so I haven't saved it. See the asterisk, okay? Looks at the uh, Arial font here, or sorry, the Verdana. Let's save this. You can see that both of them go away now. Come back over here. Let's see if I need to close close it out to bring it into effect here. Um, and you can see, you probably not too noticeable. Uh, you'd really have to be typographist. I, I don't know <laughs> what a font enthusiast is, but these guys up here, the headers are now Arial. These are still the Verdana, Verdana, whichever it in fact is. <laughs> Okay, so I've made a change in the RDL, and it reflects that in the, the actual design elements, right? Now, you can do a lot of stuff. Okay, so this report data section over here is a very important pane. So, because you can, um, you could drag and drop your column names. So, like I could say, you know, I don't know which column that I want. Okay. And I click over here and it automatically populates that. Like if I want to rearrange my columns, I can delete this one, delete this one, delete that. And then I could come over here and say, you know what, I actually want this one to be the color and I want this one to be the name. And you see it automatically populating. You know what, you could come over here, you could, I'm just hitting the delete key. Okay. And I can drag and drop and it just populates that. And the end result is the same. Okay. Need to maybe resize my columns, right? To make sure to fit that name in here. And there you go. Now I know you have questions about what does this do and what does it mean when I do this. We're going to get to all of those. Okay? I'm just trying to kind of go slow here at the beginning, make sure we get a, a solid introduction. You know, there's a there's a ton of other things that I can do. One of the things I want you to be come familiar with because we're going to use these uh, pretty often when we start dealing with fancy reports are the images, right? So um, when we take a look at our report over here, we've got shared data sources, but we don't have a shared images thing over here. Okay, under the view here, we want to actually go to the report data. You see it at the very bottom here. And we can start, and we're not going to finish it now, but we can start making things better. So notice I have an images folder for my report. Awesome, I want to add an image. Okay, prompt. And in our Course 162 folder, we have a report resources folder that has an images directory. Now you can use your own images, but I'm using these for the exercises obviously to brand the videos and to make them look better and to give you something that you could use as well. So we're going to use this fancy little half icon right here and that becomes part of our resources. So you might have wondered what is a resource for a report? Well this is one of those things. This is an image. Okay. So I want to put my image into my report go back to my toolbox over here and I'm going to start kind of moving things around. I'm going to drop this down, okay? Move this guy around. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to uh, get everything moving. Okay? So I want to get this here. There we go. And then I'm holding the shift key down and I'm hitting both and now I can move both. And then I could move this down uh, along with the line. Um, which I accidentally left up there. I'll just delete the, the line. So I think I've almost got it where I want it. You see, it's kind of just a little tricky to get exactly what you want. I might have to move them independently because I can't seem to get them both at the same time. Come on, baby. All right, so I, and I probably moved it too much that time. Uh, that's okay, but I wanted to put an image in, right? So I can take my image, and you notice that I can drag it from the resources, and I can give it a name like learnitfirst.com logo, uh, give it a tooltip, visit learnitfirst.com 
for great potato chips, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, and I want it to be embedded. Uh, I could store it in a database. I can make it hosted in an external resource location. Uh, what's the size? I want to make it original. Um, if you tell it to fit proportional, it will resize as the report resizes. Uh, I'm going to tell it original. I want it shown. Um, I can make it a hyperlink as well. So when somebody clicks on it, I can say, why don't you go to Microsoft.com, of course. Do you want a border on it? Uh, no. Make it change it to none, and I want no border. And a valid name um, under my name. It does not like to have that. Learnitfirst.com logo, and move it up here. And so, yeah, I didn't do this well. Um, but what I can do is kind of like this here. Um, I should have picked a smaller image, shouldn't I? <laughs> I had to pick a massive one. Sorry. We can move this guy down here. <sighs> I'm telling you, you think that it's easy. It can be a little bit tricky. And so once I have it, then of course I can preview it and it becomes a little fancier. Doesn't look great, right? But it's starting to take on a little more professional quality okay so it pretty easy to go through and edit these types of things before we really get too deep with editing and making them look pretty and all that stuff though one perfunctory thing that we have to cover I think maybe is the right term we have to talk about what projects and solutions are so that's going to be the topic in the next video so I'll see you there